for more on this, we can speak to the Saudi writer and political commentator Salman Al Ansari, who's joining us now from Zurich. Uh, Salman Al Ansari, thanks for joining us on TRT World. Now, what do you make of uh, this change in the top echelons of the Saudi royal family? Hi, Kamali. Thank you so much for having me. And hi to all the viewers of TRT World around the globe. Uh, basically, it's indeed a uh, very historic uh, steps that have been taken. Those decrees are actually uh, highly needed because right now, if we look at the Saudi population, we realize that more than 70 percent of the Saudi population are under the age of 30 years old. So having uh, the leaders to be basically uh, matching the same age range of the population is a huge deal. And Saudi Arabia is in real need to basically um, um, uh, boost youth engagement in, in, the, in the kingdom by having not only uh, the, 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 the people and the officials to be uh, uh, youthful, but also the leaders themselves. So I think Mohammed bin Salman has proven himself by being uh, basically a very pragmatic uh, personality. He has a very pragmatic personality. He's a person who has a very ambitious vision for the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, not only for the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, but also for the whole GCC and for the all Arab and Muslim nations to basically uh, focus a lot on development and focus a lot on economic prosperity. So I think this decree um, um, uh, came in the right time, uh, specifically when we see the, t the amount of challenges we are facing here in the Middle East um, on combating terrorism. Mohammed bin Salman has always been uh, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, forefront of combating terrorism by launching the biggest Islamic military uh, um, uh, alliance to combat terrorism. So, and I think um, King Salman made very uh, made it very clear that specifically after Riyadh summit, that Saudi Arabia will always be basically in the forefront of combating terrorism, and it will work. Uh, heavily with all the Muslim nations, more than 50 Muslim nations, to basically combat the challenges we are facing, specifically the challenges that are posed by the radical Iranian regime and by some other parties that actually would like to undermine the security of the region. We call them other parties, uh, Salman Al Ansari. You're talking about Qatar. Do you think this must be seen in the context of what's happening with uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the UAE at the moment? I think uh, when it comes to Qatar, I think. Um, uh, there is a huge consensus here, in not only in the kingdom, but also in the Arab and Muslim world, that there is no uh, tolerance with any supporter of terrorism, either it is Qatar or Iran or any other country. So I think Qatar will definitely be in a position where they have no option but to basically uh, 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 stop the funding of terrorist militias in uh, Syria, just like uh, Jabhat al-Nusra, which is JFS. Uh, which is affiliated to al-Qaeda, that should actually stop uh, uh, supporting a federal uh, um, Libya militia in Libya. They should actually support, uh, stop supporting uh, hardliners in the Arab world, specifically the Muslim Brotherhood. So I think those uh, messages have been already delivered to the Qatari government. And I think the Qatari government, they have, as I said, they have no other option but to basically uh, cut all those fundings to those terrorist groups, because right now we have zero tolerance with any terrorist militia because we have been affected as Saudi Arabia. Last year, we have been having 30 attacks from ISIS alone, 30, 3 zero. That's a huge number. So we cannot tolerate uh, terrorism. We cannot tolerate any country that would sponsor terrorism or propagate for terrorism or advocate for terrorism through their media channels, etc. So I think it's the time of decisiveness. We cannot combat the challenges and confront all the extremist groups without having complete decisive approach to do so. And I think Riyadh summit explained it very well when King uh, Salman gathered more than 50 Muslim leaders along with the U.S. president to create a new strategy to combat extremism and also by having uh, Atidal, which is one of the biggest uh, ideological warfare uh, center in, in the world to basically combat the extremist ideology, not only to confront uh, 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 militias by hard power, but also to confront their ideologies and confront their prisons either online or any other place. Okay, uh, Salman Al Ansari, a Saudi commentator, they're joining us from Zurich. Thanks very much for your input. Well.